Hello everyone. Today, I'm going to talk about another underused feature in Mackie Master Fader software, access limits. Access limits are a powerful feature in Master Fader that let you hide parts of the user interface. Usually, you're hiding things that you as the sound engineer don't need for a particular application. Or, you're hiding things that you don't want other users to accidentally adjust. Let me show you how it works. Okay, so we're here in Master Fader. Let me show you how to configure access limits. It's done from up here in the Gears menu under the Access Limits tab. Now you see here we have a bunch of buttons representing different features. And enabling any of these means that you want to limit access to said feature. So by default, nothing is enabled. So all the functionality has full access. But if I click on the left right, that means I want to prevent access to the main left right. Or I want to prevent access to the input DSP. Let's go back and look at what that just did. As you can see here, the input DSP, the EQ, and the compressor are now hidden can't access them. And same here in the mix selector, the main left right that's usually in the top left is gone. Now it's just hidden. I can come back and turn those off and they're right back where they were all settings just as they were. This is purely a visibility control. Now it's important to note that these settings are per device and they are independent of the show or snapshot that's being used. So if I set these up, I can change snapshots, change shows, they're still gonna be there until I change them again. They're per device, so each iPad, each phone, each computer has to be set up independently, but that's a really cool benefit because you can configure them completely differently on each device. And I'll show you why that's useful. A Couple other tools here, this gear lets you quickly turn on all of the access limits and turn them all back off. And this is useful because sometimes it's easier to turn them on and then turn off the few that you need access to as opposed to clicking all the rest of these. And then if you have a setup that you need and you wanna prevent anyone from changing your access limits, you can set up a passcode, click that lock, enter in a passcode, enter it again, and now you can see those settings can't be changed. Click the lock again and enter in the code and now you're back to full functionality. So as we mentioned, there's two main uses of access limits, hiding things that you as the skilled engineer want to get out of your way and things you wanna prevent others from using. Let's talk about the first. So let's say you're mixing front of house of monitors and let's look at this setup here. You can see there's a couple aux ends that aren't being used, actually quite a few, a couple subgroups that aren't being used in some matrix. Well, that's fairly common. Well, let's hide those. I don't need to see them. They're getting in my way. I'm going to limit access to those aux ends. Excuse me, not those VCA, those subgroups and those few matrix. And now, the mix selector only shows me the remaining items, so now I won't have the extra clutter in my way. Another thing I like to do is turn off access to the channel ID once I've had everything set up. Because you can see here, I'm clicking on these and nothing is happening. I don't need to change the name. I don't need to change the icon during a show. One less thing to accidentally touch and get in the way. Now let's say you're mixing monitors and you have a different engineer mixing front of house. So the front of house engineer can limit access to all of those aux ends. While the monitor engineer can limit access hiding the left right. And maybe you've agreed that the monitor engineer doesn't need to control the mic preamps. And they certainly don't need access to the matrix masters and the VCA because front of house is using those along with the subgroups. So now as the monitor engineer, this could be my configuration. And you could see, again, I have a lot fewer things here making my life easier. And whoops, I'm not even using these aux ends. I'll go ahead and hide those two for this particular show. 
really clean mix selector now. And remember, we limited access to the mic pre's. So now I can just see how those are set, but I don't have the ability to change them. And you'll notice here that we gray out the subgroups and the VCAs here on the channel routing screen. So you can't adjust them, but you can see their configuration. Now, another great way to combine that, again, with the monitor engineer, is to combine that with the auto view group or the in use view group if you're mixing front of house. Use the combination of the view groups to hide the channels you don't need as well. Let's turn these all off. Let's talk about the other application. Let's say you have multiple members of the band who are each mixing their own monitors from their own devices. Well, you want to set it up so that they have access to their aux sends and nothing else. So what I would do is start by enabling all of the limits and then just turning it off for the first monitor mix. So this would be for Jeanette. And you can see in her mix selector now, she only has the single aux end. There's no EQ, no comp, no gate, no routing, none of the extra controls in the top. All she has are faders and her own master fader for her aux end. Really slick, really easy way to prevent her from changing anything and only giving her the things she needs. You can make this even easier on her by hiding some of the channels that she isn't using in her particular mix. You can do this by first disabling temporarily the view groups. And now using the view group selector to select auto. And if you watch my previous video, I showed that this makes it so it only shows the faders that are turned up. And so now you can see Jeanette only sees the faders in her monitor mix. And you can go back to access limits now and turn on the limit again for view groups. And it stays that way. So the view group access limit hides the selector to choose the view group, but it leaves the selection just as it was. Really slick, and this is a great option. And this works on iPhone, tablets, phones, whatever they're using, you can set the access limits in the same way. And you can do this for each member of the band. So aux2, that's my mix, and here's what I would see on my personal phone. And aux3, here's what Helen would see using her phone to mix her monitors with the access limits in place. Now, one last application could be in a house of worship where you have a bunch of volunteers who are just learning to mix. And you want to hide some of the more complicated things or hide some of the more dangerous things, such as the master processing and the master routing and the matrix. I don't want a beginning volunteer changing those things. So let's hide those. And now again, in the mix selector, matrix is gone. And here on the master fader, you don't see the graphic, the routing, or the compressor limiter. So again, access limits could be used to make it easy for this beginner to learn the system, and then you could enable more functionality as they learn more and become a more seasoned engineer. Those are just a few examples of what you can do with access limits, a really unique feature to Master Fader. I hope you found this helpful. Join me again next time as we look at another underused Mackie Master Fader feature. If you have any feedback or ideas for topics, let me know in the comments below. And please subscribe so you don't miss a video. Thanks for watching.